Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Zack Snyder's Justice League triumphantly restores the director's original vision, not just for this film, but for the full DC Cinematic Universe he helped launch. In this video, let's break down the changes Zack Snyder made from the theatrical version to this four hour director's cut. Though it's not really fair to call them changes, because they're really fixes clearing away the unnecessary compromises of the 2017 film to reveal the pure narrative Zack Snyder always intended. So right away, Snyder opens with Superman's death in Batman v Superman via Doomsday with his death cry blasting out to the horizon, a literal death rattle ringing that bell of the mother boxes in Atlantis and Themyscira and in the home of Silas Stone. This replaces the reshot prologue of the cell phone footage of Henry Cavill with that poorly CGI'd upper lip since Cavill contractually needed to keep his mustache for the Mission Impossible Fallout film when this whole reshot was going down. So now we get this great visual depiction of what Lex Luthor was warning about, that this Kryptonian protector's death awoke these sleeping mother boxes, alerting Steppenwolf that Earth was left unprotected. And hearing Kal-El's cry gust past us, ah! links his life force with this particular alien tech setting it up to bring him back later. Lois visits the Heroes Park Memorial. Zack Snyder himself actually cameos in the coffee shop. It's actually a fun meadow way. He said he was storyboarding this exact shot. Jimmy Olsen actor Mark McClure from the Richard Donner Superman films cameos as a park cop instead of the Central City desk cop he was in the theatrical cut. And you've noticed how Snyder put all of this in the ratio of 1.33 to 1 or 4 to 3 according to cinematographer Fabian Wagner. And he did this to be able to frame character movement more vertically since many of them fly and leap and swing battle axe from up to down, as characters tend to do in comic book panels, as opposed to the traditional cinema left to right movement. Also, this cut was re-scored by Junkie XL, past collaborator with Hans Zimmer on many of these DC films. His percussion and his haunting melodies tie all of this together really, really well. Gone is the theatrical cut Batman rooftop opening in which he sees three mother boxes and green parademon blood. Instead, we get a prolonged hike through the Icelandic glaciers as Bruce looks for Arthur, and Arthur's departure is serenaded by townsfolk singing an Icelandic folk song. Wonder Woman's London rescue is extended to the moment where she greets and inspires this young girl. Can I be like you someday? You can be anything you want to be. But perhaps the biggest character change of this cut, Steppenwolf now arrives in the Themyscira vault, showing off some sick looking armor. Later, he uses this armor to close and snap all the arrows with a flex. <laughs> Removed was the old potato-y design, who kept calling Mother Box his mother, and the opening exchange is now. I have come to enlighten you to the great darkness. I will bathe in your fear. Daughters of Themyscira! Show him your fear! We have no fear! And then after an even more brutal loss to Steppenwolf, the Amazonian's arrow of Artemis in the shrine of the Amazons leads to an extended sequence of Diana descending into the ruins to find this chamber detailing the history of the ancient war against Darkseid. Aquaman's Fisherman Rescue no longer features that moment where he has parademon green blood on his hand afterwards. The song There Is a Kingdom now plays over his sexy wave greeting and not so sexy littering. Though we do now see him bicker with Willem Dafoe as his mentor Volko about hating Atlantis and not wanting to take his mother's trident, all taking place at the foot of the statue of the ancient king Atlan. And we finally learn more of Steppenwolf's backstory via these chats with Darkseid's Lieutenant Desaad. Steppenwolf was a disgraced general hoping to be allowed to return home to Apocalypse by conquering 10,000 worlds for Darkseid, and he explains that his parademons can sense the scent of the other two mother boxes, and he ends by saying, for Darkseid, which actually later end up being among his last words before Superman blocks his death blow. For Darkseid. Diana explains to Bruce this ancient war. It's this glorious expanded sequence, now including Darkseid in this battle. Zeus is flanked by Ares with David Thewlis's face from Wonder Woman showing up here. Artemis beside them with her shooting arm glowing. There's a past Green Lantern there to help and he goes down fast. Darkseid cuts off his hand and the ring almost goes to Darkseid before Artemis's arrow hits him back and it zips away. Ships roll up with the Atlanteans, including King Atlan. Hippolyta's there and Robin Wright cameos again. It's all very 300 and Lord of the Ringsy, I love it. And it feels like such a triumph to see these defenders of Earth repel these mother bookending the Justice League's badass victory at the end. If they could do it back then, we could do it again. Snyder restores Barry Allen's beautiful rescue of Iris West in a cascade of hot dogs. It's just so sweet and heartbreaking as Barry's only able to have these little connections in a fleeting moment to the rest of us. 
This guy's gotta be so lonely. Another added scene shows Steppenwolf and Parademons dragging Atlanteans from the ocean using a mechanized Starro to scan their thoughts. Starro is a parasitic hive mind from DC Comics, and it sounds like he's confirmed to show up in James Gunn's Suicide Squad later this summer. But Victor Stone Cyborg gets one of the biggest restorations in this film. He's now truly the beating heart of it. We see his backstory as a GCU football star, his father Silas missing the game, his mother Dr. Stone defending him to a GCU dean for hacking the grades of a friend and going through a tough time, and then their fatal car collision. Vic reawakens in his mind's eye, exploring his new powers as Cyborg. I love the sequence, showing his potential to control all world weaponry and financial systems, depicted with a Wall Street bull fighting a Russian bear, which he just clears aside to redistribute the wealth of this downtrodden server and single mom. If he had $1,400 in your account this week, you can thank Cyborg. Bruce's recruitment of Barry Allen goes roughly the same, except Snyder left out Barry's brunch rant. Bruce still throws a batarang directly at the face of someone he's not totally certain is fast enough to dodge it. I love it. But then, God, this one got me. Snyder extends this showing Bruce and Barry driving past this billboard and it reads, you are not alone. It's a wonderful reminder to all those struggling out there from the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, AFSP.org, really reminding us of the guiding force for Zack Snyder. We get a few more Alfred scenes, including him trying to help Diana make some tea and building Bruce's new gauntlets that can absorb Kryptonian blasts of energy. And there's also a new later moment when Alfred lectures Bruce about all the king's horses, how you can't really face the charging bull, don't wave the red cape. We also get more scenes with Vic's father, Silas Stone, and his assistant, Ryan Choi, whom the epilogue sets up as the future Atom. Steppenwolf's attack on Atlantis is more fleshed out, including this new moment with Mira. You can't escape. I'm not trying to. Oh, so Mira is a waterbender and she has just used her power to suck out the water from Steppenwolf inside this air pocket, including his blood. She is a bloodbender. Victor explains a new historical sequence showing how the third mother box was found in World War II Germany and then got into Silas's hands later on, which he then used to give Vic his cyborg body. And from this, the team deduces that they can use the same tech to reanimate Superman. Meanwhile, there's a new scene where Steppenwolf realizes the anti-life equation is on Earth and alerts Darkseid that he's close to conquering the planet. It's great. We understand who the villains are, how they're working together, what their opposing team strategy is. But then there is this crazy new Lois and Martha scene that ends with Martha shape-shifting into the Martian Manhunter, and then back into his human disguise of General Swanwick, Harry Lennox. The world needs you too, Lois. So the reason that he posed as Martha here is he needed Lois to stay in the game, and suggesting that he knows that Lois is the key to Superman. But before I continue, online shopping has basically become the only shopping. That's where today's sponsor, Honey, comes in. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for coupon codes and then automatically tests them when you're checking out. Here's how it works. You get Honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks, and then when you're checking out on one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons for that site. If Honey finds a working code, you'll watch the prices drop. Honey showed me a special deal when I went to buy some athletic shorts that helped me save almost three bucks on top of the deal the website was running. Those of you who have already installed Honey using my link have found over $483,000 in savings. So it's simple. If you have a computer, Honey should be on it. It's free and it works with whatever browser you use. Get Honey for free today by going to joinhoney.com slash newrockstars. That's joinhoney.com slash newrockstars so they know I sent you. Thanks to Honey for sponsoring this video. The resurrection sequence now includes Flash and Cyborg exhuming Clark without that pet cemetery joke. And then later in the ship, Snyder includes this new line from the Flash setting up his time reversal powers. I don't like to break this rule, but when I approach the speed of light, I look crazy things happen to time, but if I do it, I create massive electrical power. And that is exactly what we see in this re-edited sequence. The tiniest reversal to sync Barry's speed force with the moment the mother box hits the fluid, setting up his big move in the final act. Meanwhile, we cut to Lois in another new scene, revealing a pregnancy test in her drawer. Actually, in the epilogue, their return to Kent Farm, Snyder edited over her U-Haul box with a baby basket and looped in Bruce congratulating Clark. Congratulations, by the way. But one of the scariest inclusions that Snyder added here, right before they bring back Superman, Victor is given a haunting premonition. The unity completes, the planet gets destroyed, Darkseid is sitting atop his throne, Diana is on a funeral pyre, Darkseid stabs Arthur with his own trident and kills other Atlanteans with Omega Beams, Black Suit Superman in the Batcave, you can see the Robin suit back there, cradling the charred corpse of Lois, and then Savage Superman hovering over the ruins of Wayne Manor, holding Batman's mask that he pulled off in that BBS nightmare scene, dead Green Lantern Kilowog on the ruins, 
Thomas Wayne portrait, Diana Shield, Aquaman's trident, and the Joker truce card torn in half. The Heroes Park battle now ends not with Superman saying, do you bleed and ragdolling Batman into that dumb joke where he couldn't get up. But now Batman uses these new gauntlets to absorb and block Superman's heat vision. Such a cooler way for it to end. Steppenwolf taking the third mother box now adds the death of Silas Stone, sacrificing himself to superheat the box so that they can track it to the stronghold. We see Superman re-entering the Kryptonian ship in another re-added scene, finding various alternate Kryptonian suits as the voices of both father figures, Jor-El, Russell Crowe, and Jonathan Kent, Kevin Costner speak to him, and we get this flight sequence paralleling his first flight in Man of Steel, emerging from this same ship portal. Now, Zack Snyder said he wanted to include Superman's black suit as a nod to the suit he first wears after his resurrection in the comics. He also wanted to give him a mullet too, but he ended up not doing that. So the black color scheme isn't just to look cool. This suit is specifically designed for healing. It's more efficient at absorbing solar energy, which is why he ends this flight soaking in the sunlight. Another new scene features Bruce telling Diana about his Batcave vision of Barry and Batman v Superman taking place in that same spot, he believes it signals something darker, meaning the future that Victor saw, and in the epilogue. Snyder also revised their takeoff in The Flying Fox. You fixed it. You wanted to fly. Flight is its nature. Yours too. You'll be here, Alfred. I know it. What makes you so sure? Face, Alfred. Notice their faces look a little composited here. Snyder added this to give Bruce a moment to empower Victor and to restore Alfred's faith ahead of his meeting with Superman, which Snyder also put back in. Now let's hope you're not too late. For most of the final battle, the most obvious visual change is just the removal of the red sky, restoring it to the deeper tones that it was in the early trailers. Snyder also took out the whole Russian family subplot, the Dostoevsky joke, the advice of just save one person. Oh, and uh, while we were at it, some other things Snyder took out. The gag with Arthur sitting on Diana's lasso, Barry's moment where he kind of motorboarded Diana in the tunnel sequence, which reportedly had to be done with a stunt double. Ugh. The scene with Diana stretching out Bruce, that random dumb dirty rag covering Batman's reveal atop GCPD with Gordon, Cyborg saying booyah, and that whole fastest man alive race in the end credits. Uh, bye bye But there are some huge changes that come as the battle ends. First, Superman's arrival. He no longer appears behind Steppenwolf saying, I know truth, but I'm also a big fan of justice. Instead, he pops in right in front of Steppenwolf's final axe blow and uses his freeze breath to shatter it. And then he beats the crap out of Steppenwolf, emitting these shockwaves with every punch, echoing his death cries in the opening scene, and he heat visions off one of Steppenwolf's horns, whatever that thing is. But even more dramatic for the implications on the DCEU, Barry's plan to run laps to build up Speed Force in order to knock Cyborg into the mother boxes gets derailed when he gets shot in the side. And so they miss their window. The unity occurs. They lose. Good day, sirs. But then Barry breaks his rule. Okay. You just gotta go faster than the speed of light, far beyond the speed of light. You gotta break the rule, Barry, and you gotta do it now. Notice how with every step, that crumbling terrain reforms. He is outrunning the reversal of the world's destruction. Back to the moment of unity, even graphically through the rematerializing flesh of Superman and Cyborg, Flashpoint time travel looks amazing. Also new is Victor's battle inside the mother boxes, realizing he is not alone in that the projections of his family are just tricks by the mother boxes trying to get in his head, and they revert into these creepy white-haired demon ladies. Mother boxer. Superman ends up helping him pull him apart, leading to Snyder's amazing three-punch fatality on Steppenwolf. Finish him. Fatality. And with only one of his antler things remaining, his severed head leans at Darkseid's foot, who just stomps it all flat. Yuck. Darkseid glares at them through the boom tube portal and tells Desaad and Granny Goodness to ready the armada. Leading to this largely new epilogue, shots of Victor listening to Silas's recorded message of fatherly wisdom, Arthur departing Volko and Mira, Batman on his war machine tank from The Dark Knight Returns, Superman ripping open his shirt to the black and silver emblem, and then an extended version of Lex's escape from prison and meeting with Deathstroke, and then this creepy post-apocalyptic sequence with Bruce and Victor's premonitions come true. Batman leads Cyborg, Flash wearing armor, Mira and Deathstroke, so presumably Arthur and Wonder Woman are dead. And they add in Jared Leto Joker, who taunts him over Robin. He knows exactly what it's like to lose someone he loves, like an adopted son. And Batman counters with some interesting words about Harley Quinn. Because when I killed Harley Quinn, she begged me. And when I killed you, and make no mistake, I will kill you. Then I do it slow. 
Snyder said this was the one new scene that he wrote without it being part of his original Justice League film. For what this all means and the implications, check out my Ending Explained video. And of course, the final scene features Bruce meeting Martian Manhunter at his lakeside home. Fade to black for Autumn Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah cover over the credits. A completely new film, folks. Really, these changes are best appreciated by watching the full Snyder Cut in its totality. However many sittings it takes you, trust me, it's worth it at the end of the day. If you haven't done it and you just watch this video to get a sense of what the changes are, you still won't be disappointed by just watching this beautiful looking four hours of storytelling. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for everything you love. Thank you for watching. Booyah! I, I'm just kidding. We're, we're not. We're not doing that. Thank <laughs> you.